Welcome to Wild Horse Rights. My name is Sandra, and today we'll be going over sentence structure and punctuation. Um, I decided to give Fred a tiny break so that he wouldn't get burnt out from doing all these videos. So we're just going to go over some boring stuff, at least in theory, boring things that he probably would not want to record anyway. So let's just get started. So let's start on sentence structure. So there's a couple of basic building blocks you need to know. There's the subject which is basically the person, place, or thing that either receives the action or carries out the action. And there are some examples you can read. All of these documents are online. The verb is the action being carried out or the action being done to the subject. A conjunction is used to link clauses, sentences, and thoughts together. It can be remembered by an acronym fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, an independent clause can stand on its own as a sentence. So we'll go ahead and read this one. The thoughtless barbarian swung his axe. So that is a complete thought. It's a full sentence on its own. It doesn't need anything else. A dependent clause is basically a fragment. It can mimic an independent clause. It might have a subject and a verb, but it's not a complete thought. For example, spinning in a tight circle. We don't know what was spinning, why it was spinning, where exactly it was spinning. We just know it was spinning in a tight circle. So that's a fragment. Here are the basic types of sentences and it's by no means an exhaustive list. Like I'm sure there's way more complex ways of explaining this, but we're just going to stick to the basics. If you want more information or more complex styles of sentences, there's books and things like this available to you that you can go out and get. And there's workbooks that you can use to work on your sentence structure. So the first one is a simple sentence, which is basically just an independent clause, and that's it. There's nothing wrong with using a simple sentence. So a lot of authors are like, oh, if I use that, they'll think I'm stupid. But that's not the case. What, what will annoy them is if you use all these complex sentences, and they have to read these huge sentences over and over again, especially during an action scene. Using an extravagant sentence will really slow it down. So sometimes simple is good. Then we have the compound sentence. Compound sentence is two independent clauses joined together using a, a punctuation or a conjunction and a punctuation. Complex sentence is an independent clause joined with a dependent clause. Read this example. Spinning in a tight circle, the thoughtless barbarian came crashing down beside the leaking barrel of meat. So again, we have that dependent clause, which makes no sense by itself. But once you pair it with an independent clause, it gives it some context. Then we have the compound complex sentence, which is basically independent clause joined with another independent clause and a dependent clause mixed in there somewhere. So again, there's some examples. This entire sheet is available online for you to view and look at, and um, you can practice your own sentence structures using these examples. All right, so I'm going to go over some punctuations. This is not an exhaustive list of punctuations on how they're used. It's basic. It's meant to just be a basic refresher, and it's not intended to replace uh, any of your grammar books or anything. It's just to give you an overview, okay? In case you may have forgotten or, you know, you want to spice up your writing a little bit and venture out and use something that's not a dash. An apostrophe is used to indicate possession. When you use it for a singular noun, you just put an apostrophe S unless the word itself ends in an S or an S sound like an X. In that case, you put the apostrophe at the end. A plural noun, you want to again put the apostrophe before the S. The plural noun uh, that ends with an S or an S sound also needs to have the apostrophe at the end. Apostrophes can be used to shorten words and form contractions. Also, it can be used to omit letters. Um, and it can be used to create dialects and accents. A colon can be used to begin a list. In this example, Sandra asked Fred to go to the grocery store for her favorite snacks, bowl peanuts, pickles, eggs, and potato chips. A formal address, dear director, indicating speech parts, time, and subtitles. So basically it's used to show a speech part in like a play. Commas are something that's used to create a pause and sometimes a natural pause and speech can be replicated using a comma. It can also be used to join the series. So also know that when you're describing something and the adjectives are very closely related, like red brick, 
you don't necessarily need to put a comma there but if you were going to say the large red brick house you would need a comma between large and red because large doesn't imply red and red doesn't imply large basically a good hint that you use it correctly in a series is if a comma can be replaced by the word and the barbarians canvas the streets and spread flyers and even states a small protest outside a local library a comma can also be used to create a sentence and we saw that earlier now commas are not strong enough to join two complete sentences so if you try to do that you'd be making a comma splice and you shouldn't do it just don't it's easy to spot if you sound it out and it sounds like it's a whole sentence by itself and you can tell it's two independent clauses don't put a comma between them by itself add a conjunction it can also be used to create a, a beginning for a sentence like however therefore it can also be used for an informal address so dear Peggy Sue Peggy Sue is not the director if Peggy Sue is a director you need to use the colon I apologize in advance if I get off track because I don't like these I really 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 despise dashes because they're boring and the idea is they're supposed to be used to create an aside and provide information but to me, it distracts the reader. It's like you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you stumble over a dash. Like, whoa. But if you want to use them, you can use them to create an aside. Or the one place where dashes are acceptable, if you want to interrupt a character's speech, that's perfect because it really is intended to interrupt something. So if they're talking and they're going, you know, Bob, I had a great day at work today. Uh, and he stops because an ice cream truck comes running right towards him. Oh, why is it running? An ice cream truck comes speeding right towards him. Now ellipsis is basically used for, again, mimicking speech patterns. So maybe not a sudden stop, but like, um, um, uh, um, kind of like it shows uncertainty and it's used to fill in gaps. So I have in here an example of brackets because brackets usually go close together with ellipses because when you quote something you may not need the entire sentence the ellipsis is supposed to sort of show you that you left out something and then show the end of that sentence so this whole phrase the thoughtless barbarians believe that we don't know the rest of that sentence except for the end which is meat was the answer now reading that you don't know what kind of meat so you may use brackets to summarize part of it or like if for example the author never used the word pig he just said these pink foraging creatures well we can infer that it's a pig and we want to just say the word pig to be simple we'll just replace all of that blah 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 with pig and put brackets around it followed by the ellipsis which cuts out the rest of it some people say exclamation point but I realize that apparently Americans use point and I've been strange for quite some time now because I use mark I don't know I think I'm weird anyways, but let's move on. An exclamation mark is used to indicate shock, anger, or excitement. So I'm not going to read that to you because I really don't feel that excited about it. But if you were, you would use an exclamation mark. Uh, it's used to sort of create an aside, like you're telling them something. To me, if I had to tell you that much information, I would probably just write a new sentence. But if you were just doing a short blurb, like he really didn't know like something like that that would be okay for a parenthesis alright so question marks I don't think I need to actually explain it to you in that detail but it's basically for questions it indicates a question quotation marks are used for quoting sources and also for indicating speech in literature so then we have the semicolon which is actually one of my favorite forms of punctuation um, because like it says it creates a stronger pause without a total break in this example Sandra screamed okay we don't know why I screamed or what it's about it's just Sandra screamed that's a complete thought now we have another sentence the coffee was hot so alone you would say Sandra's over there screaming and wow this coffee is hot but if we use that semicolon to put them together wow we know why Sandra's screaming the coffee was hot Try not to combine a 
independent clause with a dependent clause using a semicolon. It's just weird. I appreciate you taking time to put up with me and not Fred. I'm way less entertaining. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or you want to see more video, more content, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks again. Have a great one.